Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan, and the market is doing what it likes to do, and that is go mixed. And, yeah, well, so why it's trying to figure out what it's going to do, we're sitting at a 1.5 trillion total market cap. But the reason for this video is that I really want to talk about two different digital assets making moves in utility, which really does matter at the end of the day. Speculation will bring you only so far. I'm talking about in the long run. Also, you're going to hear two different opinions, completely different opinions about the SEC versus Ripple suit. And they are both from attorneys. This is coming from uh, attorney Jeremy Hogan and then attorney Jim Jimmy James Filan, and you're going to be surprised how far apart they are in their opinions. And also, I'm going to do my best, yeah, as always, and I'm serious about this. Um, I've decided to just keep on trying to help BitBoy, and this this is really in all uh, serious effort to help him because. I'm really reading the comments carefully and a lot of people feel like ah just let him just let him do what he's doing because even though he is uh maybe I hate to use the word shilling but the fact that he doesn't maybe totally understand the project itself I guess people really don't care and that's okay I I can see your point I really I do but I hope that he does start to do a little bit of research because I think it's going to help even more in the long run, right? If you can really talk intelligently and in a, in a manner that is truthful to the huge value that XRP brings to the table, uh, I, I would love to hear him, you know, level up his knowledge of how it actually works. But First, let's just get to what Jeremy said. This is attorney Jeremy. And yeah, you really do have to, t you have, maybe a lot of you don't understand that the editing process of videos is really 90% of the work. <laughs> Although attorney Jeremy has an amazing delivery and it's probably he honed his skills in Japan when he was a teacher because in order to be a successful teacher here in Japan of the English language, you really have to have a knack of entertainment to keep the student's uh, concentration level, <laughs> really. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm positive if you got talking to him, he would tell you that he learned a lot of his skills here in Japan when he was teaching. I'm just, just sure of it. A lot of it is natural too, but when you have a natural skill and then you have a platform like Japan to practice in with, kids who are i don't know what age he focused on but if you're if you're teaching anywhere from they're they're really easy until they get to about age 13 and then 13 14 15 16 17 oh my gosh it's a challenge it's a real challenge i'd love to hear some of his war stories all right listen to this uh portion here again you have some of the best security lawyers in the country working for Ripple, and this is a reply that is time sensitive, and it still hasn't been filed. Ripple has not replied and has left unaddressed the issues raised in the SEC's reply of July 21st. Now, wow, did Ripple blow it? Do Ripple's 23 lawyers need more than nine days to draft a three-page reply brief? Or, wait for it. <laughs> Or is it possible, or yes, even likely, that Ripple didn't bother to file their response to the SEC because it didn't need to? And why didn't Ripple need to? Well, here we go. Ripple didn't need to file a reply because there were serious discussions going on regarding sex. <laughs> really? It's a big crescendo reveal of my video, of maybe all my XRP videos, and I get shushed by the Old Spice guy. I was just saying, that everything leading up to this last week points to this case being very close to s Shh. Okay, fine. Are there other possible explanations? Yes, of course. I mean, one of the main counsel could be very sick, knock on wood. The case could be stayed. There's a hundred things. There's just That's just one thing that comes to mind, and there could be hundreds of others. But my best guess, and what I think is the most likely case, is that there is going to be a separate... Nope. 
be you in it. So cool. And how will you know if I'm just wrong? Which is helpful. Or perhaps one of the other possible scenarios has passed. Look for something to be filed in the case by this Friday. If nothing is filed this Friday, my guess is that, well, let me just say there's something happening here, but what it is ain't exactly clear. <laughs> I love that song. All right, so let's go to what we have here. Attorney Jim, Jimmy James Filan, he takes a different opinion when speculating on the case. He is doing uh, one of seven tweets in this particular thread. And he doesn't think anyone should expect a settlement anytime soon. He says this is war and we should settle in for the long haul. Ripple is out interviewing the possible names that Hinman likely gave in his deposition. Wow. Two different perspectives. Nice balance for all of us. All right. Very late in the evening on Japan time last night, the largest outside shareholder of Ripple, SBI, uploaded the most pages to date, 180 in all, uh, for an investor presentation. This is the three months ending April, May, June, which is Japan's first Q1. Yeah, fiscal, fiscal year ends March 31st here. And what is also amazing is they got the audio up so fast. English translation, yeah, the fastest I've ever seen them do it. So the two hour, seven minute long presentation, I've listened to it twice. And what I think is most interesting for the XRP holder as a big surprise for another holder out there in the space, I have pulled some of the uh, audio clips out. So first, it is, of course, the big announcement with on-demand liquidity, ODL. This is globally huge news because the fact is XRP is being used as a bridge currency to move between Japan and the Philippines fiat money using two entities under the SBI umbrella, SBI VC trade, that's the exchange and SBI remit, that is the remittance company. And the customer you can see in this particular graphic is in Japan, and they instruct that remittance to happen. So that means they're instructing the money to move. They use SBI remit, and it goes across the XRP ledger, grabbing XRP in the middle there, and then goes to coins.ph exchange and gets exchanged into the Philippine peso. And to the recipient then, it goes. And I think this is a great way to understand how XRP ODL works. It reduces the credit risk and it also reduces the pre-funding costs. The pre-funding is the Nostro accounts, which you find with correspondent banking. And this is what XRP eliminates. There are trillions of dollars out there tied up. And so you'll also be interested to know that SBI Remit has a Remit card and it is enabled at over 13,400 convenience stores inside these stores at the bank ATMs. I think it's going to be very, very successful, especially when they start to market it at a grassroots level. All right. So um, our self-appointed supreme leader, BitBoy Crypto, I did something for him yesterday, and this was only to help him in, in his narrative, I said, just memorize this. Digital asset XRP is built for payments. It's native to the XRP ledger, which is open sourced, permissionless, and a decentralized blockchain. And the secret sauce, the secret sauce is that financial institutions that source XRP can do so for liquidity on demand. No Nostro needed to settle. Settle is super important, BitBoy. It really is. And I know, I, I, I have read through all the comments every time I, I try to help him out. And I do get some people who just say, just let him be, just let him go. Um, it's okay. I, I get your point, but sometimes it goes a little too far because on this particular one that just came out, I don't know, DAI uploaded it uh, a few hours ago. Oh my gosh. Well, XRP is not just a messaging system. It doesn't message, it settles. And so 
when you're talking about messaging, you're talking about SWIFT, okay? That's a big, huge difference. And DCG, the Digital Currency Group, it does not, in no way, at all, is it controlled, does it control XRP or Ripple, nor anyone else? Um, XRP is totally decentralized. So even Ripple, the company, doesn't have control over the digital asset XRP. Zero. Okay. They just use it. They choose to use it because that was built for payments. And the use case right now that Ripple has been focusing on is the remittance use case. And that's going to also change soon. They're going to go into other aspects like tokenization and DeFi, but this video is not about that. So all the major exchanges too, he says, have taken XRP down. I don't think so. He must live in a bubble because the lion's share of XRP is traded outside of the US. That's the way it's always been. In fact, the Korean won uh, with the Japanese yen, right now it's number one is the Korean won, but um, for many years, it was the Japanese yen in terms of the number one fiat that was trading into XRP. But right now it is the Korean one. And I think this cartel he talks about, this narrative, well, I don't know. I, I will stay neutral and I would love to hear people's comment uh, in the comment section below. But this is what I mean when it's okay, but when you've got a million people looking at this, um, well, tell me what you think. This is intentional. Don't forget that. We've shown you the ties DCG has to China in part one. But let's look at the more subtle approaches that DCG takes when it comes to messaging. XRP is the crypto from Ripple Labs. It's also controlled by the DCG. But Ripple has had a lot of drama happening over the past few years after they got sued by the SEC. All the major exchanges pulled XRP from their list of tradable assets. To save face, even Coinbase took it down and they're part of the DCG portfolio. Coindesk never did that. Ticker on their website, the most traffic crypto news site in the world, has never taken XRP off their ticker. It's been right next to Ethereum and Bitcoin the whole time. That's a subtle but important detail. Coindesk knew that XRP wasn't going anywhere because the DCG is working with Ripple Labs to make XRP and the projects from XRPL tokens become the cryptocurrency standard between the financial institutions. Uh, remember Glenn H. Hutchins from earlier? That's not a coincidence. I believe that this whole SEC drama is a smokescreen for Ripple Labs to continue development out of the public eye, secure all their deals well ahead of the competition. That's how a cartel works. They collude and manipulate. Connect the dots, Bit Squad. You're swimming with the whales. This isn't. So. I, I'm really going to listen to the audience here and I'm, I'm just reaching out to everyone to really, should I just let it go and just let him do his, his pitch, uh, even though it's truly not a messaging system and it's uh, I, the DCG group controlling Ripple or even XRP for that matter, and all the major exchanges, N not not really. <laughs> I, mean, I I don't know. Yeah, I'm really, as you can tell, I'm being so honest with you right now. I'm having a moment of uh, really, uh, I'm conflicted as to uh, how we can help Bitboy. I, I'm really there to to help him out. I'd love to see him. Because I really, I'm going to go back to what really what I said in the beginning of the video. If he is really to understand the value that XRP brings to the table, oh my gosh, with his audience and with a, the correct narrative, um, it could be just massive. But I worry about this kind of short time pump business without having the facts behind. I don't know. Yeah, I'm being too, I think I'm, I'm being, I'm opening up my kimono maybe a little too much, but I'll get back on track here. So this is the portion of the presentation that came out from SBI and it is really um, 
where the secret sauce is. And the secret sauce is the fact that XRP is liquid in terms of moving currency. And also, too, it's quite interesting in this clip, we hear about uh, Mr. Kitao wanting to expand with the remittance money app, Money Tap, and he's looking to Africa. All right, here's this portion here. Must be a remit. This is companies both in Vietnam and Cambodia. Again, we are doing, using Ripple to do international remittance with these two companies. So something like this will be increased more and more. And we just recently announced this and I uh, actually uh, helped increase the price of uh, Ripple, but SBI Remit deploys Japan's first international money transfer service using crypto assets. So this will be used to do international remittance from Japan to Philippines. So we, this is a new service using Ripple's payment infrastructure and digital asset, XRP. By utilizing such technology, the credit risk and cost will be reduced significantly. This is the overwhelming competitiveness. Remit will become overwhelming number one in international remittance. And not only in Japan, but they could become a global player as well. In addition to that, there's a, I'm making them I'm make SBR Optica to do a used car business. And I'm planning to use Ripple for uh, transmission uh, or uh, remittance of the money here. And I'm planning to invest in a bank over there. I'm looking at some candidate. I think it was a Uganda bank, which I made an investment before. And uh, we made money, so I sold it. Uh, because there's a lot of political uncertainties and I felt we had some risk in that country. So I exited quite early, divested early. But I would like to buy a bank, something like that, or maybe establish a bank like that. Maybe in Africa, we can establish digital bank. So I think you can pretty much SBRM. bet on a digital bank by SBI in Africa soon. And here we have some candid talk from Mr. Kitao. Again, this is the English translation that you're listening to. Uh, this is where he's talking about how he had the idea to split Ripple up into a U.S. division and a non-U.S. division in case they were to lose the litigation. Okay, here you go on this one. Um, more than 300 uh, financial institutions have been participating in RippleNet. I would say 90% of the business is outside of U.S. Even when I was a director, I had been saying this, let's split it into two, to U.S. and non-U.S. So even if you lose on our litigation on this side, it will be just limited to there. And we can continue to do uh, the business as usual on this side. So I've been saying this from before. So we'll see what happens. They think that they can win this litigation, this battle. We're yet to see what will happen, but in any case, um, we will uh, simply, because this is legalized in Japan, uh, we will roll this out in uh, other countries that are legalized. So we will continue to expand business using SRP. Same thing with Money Tap. There are 38 regional banks that are investing in Money Tap already. US Ripple uh, also holds 33%. They're the largest external shareholder. Yeah, so everybody knows that Money Tap runs on Ripple. That's a very interesting clip. Okay, now we go to the last uh, little bit that I thought was fun and that they are considering adding some more crypto assets to the VC Trade Pro site. And I kind of am putting that game into play where I like to pretend that I am part of the strategy team on the uh, on the management side of SBI and what two assets would I add because it looks like there's some mystery spots for two different assets. Well, I would probably say Flare, Spark Token, and the second one would be Quant. Now, why would I say Quant? Well, I would say Quant because many times I've talked about how Quant Overledger will be on top of most major blockchains. 
for many use cases and especially pointing out the integration with XRP Ledger. And this is so interesting where Mr. Kitao talks about using quant and not only for the FX business, but also for the crypto business too. Hang on, have a listen. Um, a technology like other quants and other technology or systems can be utilized for our FX business or for our crypto asset uh, business. Um, a technology like the quants and other technology or systems can be utilized for our FX business or for our crypto asset uh, business. So I let it play twice there. So something like quant. Let me tell you, Mr. Kitao doesn't drop names like that unless he's got a reason to. He's way too coy for that. And uh, when I tweeted this out, the most interesting thing for me is that I got a like from Quant Networks, which is super rare. So uh, I think that it is going to help them do their FX business and crypto business with the market maker B2C2, which is arguably the largest market maker in the world, which SBI owns. Wow, that's a shh, right? All right, so let's see. I'm going to jump to the fluff, and that is finally, after four years, after four years, the One World Kimono Project is done. They got the last kimono made and what it is is for the olympics they made a kimono that was specially designed with the highest threads the best textiles in the whole country and each one made by a different uh was sponsored and made by a different entity to represent the 200 countries that are participating around the world in the olympics it was a fantastic project. And unfortunately, I think with the current situation, it didn't get a chance to be shown off at the uh, Olympic Games, which I think was maybe possibly the original thought, but everything got changed at the last minute. So uh, yeah, it's just one of those things, but they are absolutely stunning and beautiful. I'm not sure which country this is, but still my favorite one is one that came out early and that is Thailand. I want, I'm gonna show it to you, but if you go to the kimono.piow.jp, you can see all the designs and it's just amazing. A really, just truly so beautiful, so creative so representative of the country in so many ways. If you go deep into any of the countries, you'll see the so much symbolism as to what makes that country stand out and special and for its uh, contribution to the world in many ways. My favorite is Thailand. I think maybe I'm drawn to the strength of the color contrast, but these are the uh, lanterns that are often uh, allowed to float during certain festivals. And here you've got the elephant on the uh, design. Looks like another type of lantern. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so familiar with the Thai culture and I'm sure uh, Digital nomad investor could probably tell us what flower this is. It looks like it's maybe uh, related to the lily family. Something I'd have to uh, research more, but I just love this one. I think this one is uh, very, very beautiful. And then just to share a little humor with you, this is the kanji for eki. Eki means station. and particularly like train station. And when you are writing any kanji, the kanji character, there's a there's a strict specific order 
that you don't deviate from. <laughs> when you're very, very young and you learn how to write the characters that originally came from China, they must go in this order. So you've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the radical for horse. And then eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen strokes to make that kanji. What I want you to do is pay attention here at the bottom, okay? So you remember, boom, 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 boom. And this last stroke is a single stroke that's when you have a brush that is dipped into the sumi ink, you push down a little harder to get the fude, the top of the nib, to go a little thicker to get that perfect styling. So now look what Nipori Station did. This is Nipori Station. It is a northeast part of Tokyo. They have the eki kanji, but they turned the one, two, three, four into a cat's paw. And the final stroke is a cat's tail. How fun is that? I, they just did this. It was uh, just discovered and it's being shared and a lot of people are having fun with it. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.